Good morning, y'all. All right, so did a little bit off camera this morning. One of my big things that I learned along the way, again, kind of an elementary deal, um, definitely on something like this where you're trying to keep a nice square box, definitely never weld on this, sorry, and on this inside edge first. Oh, it's not hot anymore. Uh, so don't weld in there first is the big one. I was taught, uh, you know, somewhere I picked it up by somebody, I was taught to always weld this very outside edge and then start doing, you know, your top, your bottom. Um, I prefer to not weld overhead if I don't have to, so I'm going to wait until I flip it over to weld this other side. It should keep it square just fine. Um, so, yeah, and I'm trying to seal off this bottom one. Um, but another thing, um, again, that I was taught, Kind of basics, you can't really see it, I'll talk about this here in a second, is this top one, I want it to be able to drain if it gets any water in it. Um, so I'm not going to, well, I'm probably going to do a little bit, like half inch on this two inch tube from this corner down and from the other corner up and then leave the center open um, so that it can drain. Um, you know, in theory, on that bottom, it's going to be slightly buried in gravel um, I'm making them put a whole bunch of gravel right where it's going to go so that it's not sitting in dirt because it would, especially that thinner tube, it would rust out pretty easy in dirt. Um, not that we're a crazy wet climate, but as you can probably see, there's snow out there and some water puddles, you know, so we do get water, we do get rain. So it would rust out pretty quick. Um, my theory, right or wrong, I'm going to do my very best to weld this and actually seal this. And I'm going to hope for the best because um, I personally, I feel that uh, if I were to put some holes in it or anything, like on the bottom, it would just attract water in. And so I'm going to, basically, I'm going to trust myself that I'm actually going to uh, uh, get it sealed good. So I don't know, like I said, right or wrong, it is what it is. Um, I did make these corners, I was going to cut some like fancy, larger, fancy brackets out on the plasma table. Um, I honestly just got kind of lazy. <laughs> Don't really think it needs it. I was going to make a 12 inch by 12 inch, uh, you know, corner bracket and then have kind of a center cutout in it. But I don't really think it needs it. And I got a little lazy because there's a piece of 16 gauge on the table. And this piece of eighth inch here is really heavy and I'm not really ready to put it on there. <laughs> so I just abandoned doing that. Um, Cause I definitely didn't want 16 gauge for these. I wanted something a little bit stronger. So I had some scrap that was five and a half inches. So I just made it five and a half by five and a half, I'm sorry. And um, yeah, so I made some corners. I think these would be plenty strong. Um, there will be a door in here. It's gonna be here and it's gonna swing away like that. But it is going on the face of this channel. Um, and the angle that is going to be kind of the positive stop is 3 16 thick. This is 8 inch thick. So in theory, if I got it correct and nice and smooth, which I did, there should be a 16 inch gap at very least um, between the back side of the door and this. So we should be golden there. Um, everything is within, I'm less than an 8 inch from square. Um, I'm more like a 16th. Um, I'm a little bit more than a 16th, but I am going to weld those inside corners here eventually. Um, again, I'm not going to fully weld these inside corners. So that should pull it around just a little bit. Um, and then I think we're going to be golden. But for this project, within an eighth, over 15 feet, we're, we're, we're good. But this piece of angle iron here had a little uh, bow this way in it down there in the middle um, and so I wanted to pull it in and get this to where this corner where it's pretty square and I'm not super worried about that messing with my my uh, squareness even though this was my long corner so that could actually help me um, but I could not find a clamp big enough to get me across there so I had to improvise a little bit so it's just things like that that when you don't necessarily have all the big fancy tools little improvising put that clamp there got it super tight and uh then hooked my clamp in just pulled in i'm not pulling that hard um and everything everything is clamped to the table so it's not going to move um and just pulled uh pulled my little bit of a bow out of this piece and this is nice and square now and um we should be golden all right got our clamp off um 
pretty much got the bow out of this. Um, we will, um, in the direction we want it to go, which is in, we will get a little more bow out when we weld that inside corner right down there. Whoop, right there. Um, so I'm accounting for that. There's still just a tiny bit of a bow in it. Um, I'm not looking for perfect, um, but I'm just wanting to make sure this corner was good. Double tacked it, make sure it didn't pop any tacks. Um, the one thing on a project like this, if you're not willing to have all pretty much equal thickness metals, which I wasn't, um, you gotta be really careful, especially on this. This is pretty thin tube, um, 063 or 065. Um, when you're welding this, I, again, I wish I had the camera stuff right now to kind of show you, but when you're welding this stuff, the, what I like to do is I have it kind of in between, halfway in between what I would run for this 3 16th versus what I'd run for this 16 gauge. Um, and then what I do is, so I don't blow a hole in this, which I did over there, but I just slowed down too much, is I like to kind of keep my arc over here on the thicker metal and then not really a whip because you don't want to get like air in it or I mean uh, porosity. So yeah, um, but I just like to do a nice kind of a gentle E, um, but I hesitate over here on the thicker metal, obviously much more than I do here, if that makes sense. So it's kind of a, like a drawn out E, drawn out E, drawn out E, you know, if that makes sense. Um, as you can see, I got a little cold here. Um, it's not to the point I'm going to grind it down again, especially for what it's for. Um, I'm not going to do that. Um, but this, I started here and went that direction. So this was just a little bit cold. I should have held here just a little longer. This is looking really good over here. So I think the camera makes it look probably a little colder, a little taller than it really is. But, and this here definitely doesn't look as good on camera as it does in person. This is actually a really, really nice one here. So anyway, that's my uh, right or wrong. Um, that's what I found works the best. And uh, yeah, hopefully that'll that helps somebody. We are gonna set up and do a bunch of cutting. We So we got both frames. You see them stood up there. We got both frames done. Um, and now we are gonna start cutting everything for the, uh, the actual swinging doors. Um, so, it's gonna be two doors, not just one. Oops, sorry. Um, and I've got all my measurements figured out. I got a one inch gap on the bottom because there's gonna be gravel and stuff and we don't want it super tight. Um, there is gonna be angle on this side. Ooh. On this side and this side is gonna be angle, so it's got a positive stop against the, the door frame. Um, this is gonna be a square corner and this is gonna be a square corner. 45 45 the reason for that this is angle meeting angle and i want it to look nice up there so it's gonna 45 45 up and then this is two pieces of tube i didn't finish i'm sorry this is going to be two inch tube this is going to be two inch tube so they're a nice you know flush finished uh edge so these two pieces of tube will be 45 to make a nice corner i kind of hem hot about that again it's for a barn and there's not a lot of margin on this project so it's more time but I, a uh, little bit of an offshoot, I'm huge on I hardly ever clean welds off. Um, if the project calls for it, then yeah, definitely. But most of my work, I'm not saying I'm the best welder, but I try and make them look pretty enough that I don't, well, they need to be functional first. But I try and make them look good enough that I don't need to grind them off. Um, like this one, I probably will, this front one, just because there's barn metal going on here so i won't leave that uh, especially if it's a little bit got a little bit of height to it you know but the ones on the back side and and on the bottom side and all that i'm not gonna i'm just not so it's really not gonna be that much more it's a little bit more setup time um but yeah it's not gonna be anything crazy so here's all my cuts i got them all figured out um so i've got this angle that angle this tube and that tube times two actually times four um, but if you remember from making the frame, one door is an inch narrower than the other, or one frame. So I've got two at the wider, two at the narrower, two at the wider, two at the narrower, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then this is all, um, the angle is going to go across to screw the bar metal to. It's going to go crossways every two. It's a little over two feet. 
you know, normally barn metal, you want to be two foot on center. It's not super crucial for what it's on. So to get a nice even thing here without having an extra piece, like six inches from the top, it's going to be like two foot four, I think, center to center. So it ain't going to be no big thing. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get the saw set up and uh, go from there. Broke out the Evolution seven and a quarter chop saw. I actually really like this little chop saw. Um, I know a lot of people don't because a lot of people do a lot bigger projects. I work like, it feels like almost solely with um, one inch tubing um, or like two inch angle, you know. I do a ton of projects with that, especially in aluminum. I go through probably 200 sticks a year of one inch square tube aluminum. I mean, I, I do a lot with that. So this is a great size for me. Um, you know, I've got the miter chop saw and all that, but I I really like this size. I can just throw it right up here on the bench, super easy. It's light. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I've got the bandsaw. I'm going to turn it because it's going to handle, especially on that two-inch angle, it's going to handle the 45s better um, because of the size of the two-inch tube and the two-inch angle. So I'm going to set it up for 45s, and I'm going to, well, not really have to set it up, but I'm going to have this here to do the straight cuts. Because um, I can't really sit and do all the 45s and then move the fence and do all the straights. It's not really going to work well that way. Um, it's going to be way more math and way more setup than rather than just pulling this out. So let's attack this. Um, let's just start at the top um, up here. So we're going to do four of the two inch angle um, at exactly nine foot to the, I believe that's to the top of the 45. Yes, it is. Um, so let's, uh, let's attack those first and we'll go right down the list and we'll do this little one inch angle last because they're all square and I can stack two together. See, I was kind of uh, struggling over there, uh, trying to figure out because uh, I need my angle a certain way on the angle iron. Um, and I come to the conclusion that I'm just going to cut the angle with my portable uh, bandsaw and then just cut all the square cuts. So once I'm done with the tubing, I, I, so I switched to doing tubing first. So once I'm done with the tubing, I'll turn the bandsaw back to square and and uh, go that route because I haven't used this thing in a while and I see why <laughs> it works um, I, yeah I don't mind the evolution brand I've had several other things um, but this one is pretty yeah I, I, I remember why I don't really use it very much um, obviously it's a tin base but even this this Nice cast thing. You tighten it up real good, it like bows back. Um, yeah, this uh, this is not the most square cut ever. It goes whoop. <laughs> so yeah, luckily this is for a barn. It'll work, um, but it's not uh, it's not fantastic. So. I have discovered further, uh, more than I already said earlier, that I do not like this saw. <laughs> it is just, 
Uh, man, I don't know. It doesn't help the blades. This blade's getting a little dull, so I'm going to change the blade before I judge it too hard. But, man, oh, man, hopefully I can... Yeah, so, again, I'm fine for this project. It's for a barn, but I, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit too precise for that. I don't, I don't jive super well with that. It'll be fine. It'll fill up with weld. It's going to be a butt joint into the channel iron, so, because obviously this tubing is the other half of that. So, I ground on it a little bit, um, but if you guys can look, can you see that? Look at that. Look at look at that corner versus the rest. And then that corner down in there is shallower. Oh, what a mess. It's just a mess. So anyway, that's where we're at. Um, I am going to, I think I said it earlier, but I'm going to manually cut the angle iron. I don't feel good with any way I can get it in the, the bandsaw um, up. How does that work? Up like that. Um, because it just, yeah, there's not going to be, I'm sure there is some sort of good way to hold it, but I'm not going to screw around with it. I'm just going to bring it up here on the table and just use the manual, manual saw. It's going to be welded together corners, so a little bit of variance is not going to be a huge deal. Also, this is one of those places where uh, if you remember in part one, if you watched it, I was talking about this bandsaw and how I had an Ellis for a while. Wasn't the biggest fan for my own reasons, not of the saw itself. Just, yeah, anyway, this is where that Ellis would be probably awesome because I'm not super caring if they're perfect. Obviously, I'm using that thing. Um, if they're, you know, perfect cuts and with that swivel head, this would be so much easier. Having to swivel the the vice is just, it's not a huge thing. It's just makes you not want to, you want to just set this saw up for this and this saw up for this, you know, so. I did I went ahead and used the here let me zoom you out the portable bandsaw um I don't think it's quite the right tool for the job uh, at least not the way I want to do it as you can see it came out pretty good um but surely for welding purposes I really want to have this this be flat because this is going to be a butt joint with another piece of uh angle it's going to have this same angle here it's going to come in and I want to have a nice big fill it in there so i don't really want this angled i could grind it obviously but while i'm right here cutting i want to cut this flat and cut that angled that's not really the problem it's hard to get the you know because those portable bandsaws you really got to be up against this stop here to really get it to cut well and not bounce around it's a little bit difficult um probably would have been a lot easier if i had started with a full piece so it wasn't right on this corner but even then, trying to be over here, it was it was kind of a, a little bit of a, it's not the best tool for the job. Um, so I might go back to the drawing board on that. I might just cut it with a grinder as much as I don't want to. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'll think on that. A little improvise. I got a sacrificial piece with a 45 on it. And then super easy to cut that angle. Because my rest on my saw could fit right there and I could just roll right down through the cut uh, it actually it worked really really well so um yeah just a little uh a little improvising Got all of our one inch angle cut uh, six at five six and a half and six at five six. So that's all those did that off camera. Um, now I want to show you guys uh, how the uh, I got one door fitted together. Show you how it fits. 
almost like perfection, that's how. Uh, yeah, I uh, couldn't avoid without wasting a bunch of material having a uh, weld line back here. Uh, it is what it is. Stuff happens. There's no sense in wasting material. So, yeah, that fits really, really nice. This is just a butt joint, so it's not anything crazy. And then this worked out exactly how I wanted it. So, as you can see, that's a nice, going to be a nice fillet there. Uh, fill it, yeah, fill it. Um, and that fits real nice. And I just pulled square on it. I am dead perfect on this project. I'm good within with within a sixteenth to um, an eighth, and I am literally dead perfect at this stage. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack my corners together just so nothing moves. And then I'm going to lay my little cross pieces in. I'm going to tack those in. And then I am going to do one cross brace. Um, I'll probably sit and talk about it more once I cut it. Um, but this is going to be the hinge side because of the angle. Um, so I am going to go from this corner to that corner with one cross brace of square tube. Now that square tube will be tacked to all the angle iron going across. So it'll be a little bit more than that. But... Um, if you envision this door standing up, sorry about my glove, envision this door standing up, this is the hinge side, so it hinges here, uh, here, so it hinges right here, so all your weight is bearing down on that top hinge and that corner, like it's all wanting to lean this direction, if that makes sense, not sure if that makes sense, but Hopefully you understand. So you got a square box. It's all putting pressure on that top hinge and that bottom corner. So what you want to do, unless you're going to do an X brace, which the second part of the X really doesn't do you anything, um, is you're going to want to put a brace here and go across because then what you're doing is you're bracing down here to the hinge end right here. And then basically envision it like you're holding that corner up so that all that weight's not bearing down on this end. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, there's some good videos on YouTube of some guys showing it, which is, uh, I think it was like with wood. It wasn't nailed together or anything. He put like a square box and it would just fall apart. And he put one brace in this, or actually he put one brace in this way first and it still just fall apart. And he put one brace going that way instead of this one and it would hold there. And it's It's really interesting. You should look it up if you... You've never really thought about that. So it's just going to get one brace going there, which is basically like literally going to be, for lack of better terms, holding that corner up. Um, I don't think it's really going to need it, um, but I want it to be good and strong. What's really going to be the sheer strength of it, um, just like just like a barn, is the tin. All right, and cross pieces, are they're not in, but they're sitting in the right place. Um, I like to do two foot when I'm going to put barn metal on. This worked out to be about two foot two. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, considering the barn currently has, I believe it's four foot spacing. <laughs> so this will be more than ample. Um, I did eighth inch, one inch angle to give it plenty of meat to bite, the screws to bite into. Um, I have not tacked it together yet. I'm actually going to go ahead and cut this because it is so nice and square. Um, I did a little math. I cheated a little bit, used a calculator online. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got the tubing in here. I'm going to cut it at 123 and 3 16 And then I'm going to probably rig up something to use the swag table with the electric bandsaw. To Lesson learned. It's not exactly 45. <laughs> that was one of those things I got a little ahead of myself. And, um, Yeah. It's not quite 45. That was pretty dumb of me. I was just all on this triangle 45 kick. And obviously because it's taller than it is wide, it's not a 45. So I cut two 45s and obviously it did not fit. So this, this edge here and that edge on that one, I had to grind down a little farther. And I'm just going to have to fill that. Not going to be a huge thing. Mainly, especially, actually really both ends, um, this is a pressure point, not not uh, pulling on it or anything like that so it's gonna be fine not a huge deal so anyway there it is i'm gonna get it all tacked together and um 
Actually, I'll probably tack it together and then I'll just start going around and around welding, trying to keep heat moved around, so. All right, guys, I'm not sure where I left you, but I ran out of wire on a Sunday and I, uh, it's, it's cold now again, and anyway. So I did a little bit of work um, without you guys, I apologize. Um, kind of engineered up. Um, they wanna have, I don't know, my drawings didn't show very well, but there's gonna be two separate doors that go inside each one of those frames. One door is going to be not used very often, you know, and the other door will be. The often used door is just going to have a quick gate latch, like so. Um, and it, whew, I can't really do it one-handed, but it, uh, you can see it, it's, it'll spin, but it also, it just slides in and out. There's a spring inside of here, so. But this door, I need, um, want to have a latch mechanism, and they expressed not necessarily a concern but they wanted to make it easy to open and close because my first just rough idea was just have these same latches you've probably seen these a million times they normally have a hook here um and just have one at the bottom and then have this one at the top this is this is the top here this is imitating that frame right there right there um and and then just have a rod welded to it that goes down and then it just hangs there or sits there and when you want to open, you just pull it, twist it. As you notice, these used to have pins here, and I took them out that this um, roll pin would catch in. Don't need that now. Anyway, that was my initial plan. They expressed, not like I said, not really a concern, but they would like it nice and easy to open for all their borders and stuff at this horse barn. Okay, so I went to the drawing board, stuck with the idea of those latches because I think they work the best, but then I decided to design up. And, you know, I've seen some cam over... Um, gate you know some setups like this a lot but this one is technically my own design I mean at least all the parts so cut these out on the plasma table um, um, so and then this is just a half inch bolt welded onto the tube uh, it's not fully welded yet but welded on the tube and these are just a couple pieces of strap this one is so much longer because when you spin it it's got to miss that so I don't have it really tightened up yet but um, so yeah, so it, uh, let me see if I can zoom you in down there. So you pull up on the lever and it, and it does that on both sides. Um, we start off, I just picked to go four feet from the bottom and I'm just going to weld this bolt right on the face. Uh, I could get all technical and try and bring it up through the bottom, but then I'd have a hole to fill and it works really well for me because it spaces me up and it's going to keep this latch up off of the up off of the tubing which is what i want so i just measured up four feet and i'm going to put it out here right out here close to the edge like so i've uh, got that all lined up i'm going to weld that little guy on and then we've got washers and if i didn't show you before design that out and cut it design that out on fusion and cut it out on the plasma table um no real i literally just not literally free-handed, but basically just free. There's no real rhyme or reason to the shape other than I knew I wanted these two points to be out a little ways. And I wanted to get it out away from the tubing. So, and then it will do that number, which you I think you saw earlier. So. so that is a normal gate latch that normally this comes up and then has kind of a hook here. And you can see there's this cotter pin. Hopefully you can see that. See that there? And there's normally these little pins that go, ooh, trying to look through the camera, that go right there, one on each side. And normally you would pull this up and then spin it. And this cotter pin would lock behind these and that's what would hold it up. So these are just kind of sort of half, you know what, uh, pressed in these holes. So I just pounded those out real quick. Cut that off and then cut a slit as you can see, pretty rough, like it's nothing super fancy. It's roughly a 16 inch thick and made these little tabs and they will just slip right in there. This one I got a little cleaning to do, but they will slip right in there like so, and obviously not crooked like that. And then I just weld around them on both sides. And then I take a piece of half inch round stock and do the same thing to the end of it. And then it will bolt in here, that way there's, it can move a little bit. 
Um, so it'll look identical to this with this same tab and a little quarter inch bolt. Originally, my design was to have those same little tabs on the other end of the half inch rod coming to right here. But then as I put this together, because I dry fit everything, I realized as I turned it like this, because those latches need an inch and a half of travel to fully open. Well, these holes, which is a little bit of an oversight on my part, but I also didn't want this too wide. This is only an inch from the center of that hole to the center of that hole. So when I turn it, it starts here. I turn, not this direction, obviously, but I turn it a full 90 degrees. I'm only getting an inch of travel from where it was right here around to here. So what I ended up learning I needed to do is either remake a new bracket, which I really didn't want to do, or I cam it past. Hopefully that makes sense. You can see the bolt through there. Instead of going full 90 degrees, I cam it past until I get to that extra half inch that I need. So when I did that, those little short brackets would not work here. They would hit, there's a washer underneath here. Uh, I don't have one close, but there'll be a washer on the back and a washer on the front, and then a nylock nut <coughs> on here. Um, once I did the cam over like that, they would not clear, well, this one did not want to clear the washer. This one obviously would hit this. Okay, so what I've done is just taken some three quarter inch wide, which is what those little pieces were, some three quarter inch, just flat bar strap, and I've made it, put a hole there, and I'm gonna cut it off at six inches, and then it will clear everything. And then this one, I made it a little bit longer, so it didn't hit right here, and then just took a little bit of a, little bit of notch out of it, basically, to clear that washer. I could probably shave the washer down. Uh, you know, there's multiple ways you could go about it, but that's just the way I chose to go about it. And uh, it actually came out working really, really well, so. All right, guys, don't be dumb like me and try and do this with your hands. So, as you can see, a little flyer got to get some dross off, or sorry, little parts. Take some pliers, and then you can just, and I use a pair of like crappy pliers that really, really suck. And that way, when you do like I do, where you accidentally hit the sander once in a while, don't care. So, should be pretty obvious, but in case it's not, uh, yeah, don't, uh, don't get your fingers too close. All right, we got all of our parts and pieces. The only thing we don't have is our half-inch rod, like so. Um, I have a whole 10-foot piece of it over there. I do not want to cut that until I know, I mean, I've put this in the exact same spot and I'm gonna put the spring latches in the exact same spot as I did on the other door, but I just don't like to cut things like that, especially when I don't have any extra until I know exactly how long I want it. So there's all of our parts and pieces, our latches, our little uh, connection points, our, la our actual handle. Um, our extra pieces that I made. Anyway, let's get all the pieces uh, put together and I'll, uh, I'll actually try and set you up over here and see if I can get it to where you can see, you know, as I kind of assemble everything, dry fit, tack, etc., etc. First order of business. Most people cut these off, but I like the strings. Hopefully you can see me. Tuck these in your shirt or something. These will kill you. <laughs> but I really like the strings on my shirt, so I try, I try not to cut them off. Some of my shirts have them cut off because they're just too bad, but tuck those in. I'm not going to be doing any grinding right now, but still, uh, that's kind of the first order of business for the day. So, um, all right, where do we want to start here? Let's, uh, let's weld this bolt on. check that's where we want it. I'm going 48 inches up. We are perfect. Watch your eyeballs. Probably got some safety police 
Yes, these are just knit gloves. Just how I work. Um, I know they catch on fire. I, I know. I I bet you guys do a lot of unconventional things in your shop as well. Uh, when I do heavy stuff, I'll start using my a regular welding glove, but even this little bit I'm going to do here, I'm not going to. I just keep my hand away from it. We don't need to go crazy. It's just holding a handle on. Um, I think that's probably plenty. Um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it just 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 because I like over engineer things. I'll do basically a tack on each of these flaps here. Is that necessary? No, probably not. But I like everything to be over engineered. So it's just how I do it. All right. So we're gonna take this. We've got a mess here, guys. Holy mackerel. And we are going to just tack this. Well, we're gonna do a little more than tacking, but I'm just gonna, because this is 16 gauge, this little tab, and this is a, not heavy, but a, a heavy piece of a half inch bar. Um, I'm just gonna do little spots. Spot, 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 spot. Okay, so I don't burn through the 16, because it's super easy to burn through the 16 gauge. Um, I won't, I don't know if I'll say it's an art, but I think I said it in my previous video, learning the ins and outs of welding something much thicker to something much thinner <laughs> is something that takes a little bit of time. There's, it's hard to, at least from my knowledge base, it's hard to give you a, this is exactly how you do it. It's just kind of, I think you just kind of got to play with it, so. Hopefully y'all can see that. I think you can. So it's just a bunch of little tacks. I'll go ahead and do the back side as well, but I'll let it cool off just a touch. All right, watch your eyeballs. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. Like I said, do the backside and um, we'll be on our way. Now, is that much welding on it needed? No, I'm sure it's not. Um, but that's the whole thing of I like to kind of over-engineer, overdo things sometimes like that. Um, that's just kind of how I roll. So this one I got a little bit lopsided, but it'll be okay. Won't hurt nothing. And there we go. All right, so we go back to clamping. Let's go to the clamp right there. All right, I think you guys can see. Let me look. I think you can see. Yeah, you can see this corner. So we're gonna go basically right up 
Now, normally, I'm big on, you know, getting your squares out and, like, trying to be just absolutely perfect. This goes back to the whole thing. This is for a barn. Am I going to get it as close as I possibly can? Absolutely. But it does not need to be down to the, you know. So, basically what I'm doing here is I'm, all I'm doing is because I want this one off to this side of the tube. And that one's going to be inset to the inside of the tube. So I'm just lining it up right with the edge of my tubing. And I'm just butting it, I think you can see it. I'm just butting it right up to the weld here. If you look right down here in the corner of the screen, hopefully you see that. I don't really, I'm, it's a whole rant I probably shouldn't go on, but you know, I see a lot of guys and I'm not faulting them. I'm just saying you see a lot of, whether it be on YouTube channels or in real life, everybody wants to smooth welds, and I'm sure that's great. Um, you know, if you do it right, you got good penetration, it's totally fine. But as least often as possible, I, I try not to smooth welds off. Um, not to sound like arrogant or anything, but, and I'm definitely not the best by any means, but I try and make my welds look good enough while still being strong enough obviously, um, that I don't really feel the need to clean it off. If people don't like, and again, I don't mean it kind of like an arrogant way, but if people don't like, I'm not sure if you can even see my face, if people don't like the look of it with weld on it, I honestly, most of the time, it's just not a project for me. Because the time it takes to sit there and smooth all the welds out, and then half the time, I'm sure some people are really good at it, but Half the time it's, if you really know what you're looking at, you can just see the where it's been. Uh, I know there's a lot of ways you can do it and different materials you can use as far as abrasives to really smooth it out nice. I, I do a lot of this stuff, stuff. I do a lot of this stuff for, uh, you know, friends. Um, not always, actually, that's actually gotten pretty rare these days. I don't do a lot for friends, but, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't charge crazy amounts of money, and because of that, I'm not gonna sit and do that much work. Otherwise, it's it's again not worth it to me. So, that's a whole rant I probably didn't need to go on, but I I view it on my end. I view it more as strength. I like to have as much strength as possible, and not smoothing a weld is just that much stronger to me. And personally, I think it looks cool, but that's just me because of what I do, I suppose. But so anyway, after all that, I'm just gonna butt it right up to this weld and then put it right against the edge of that material. Looks good. I'll tell you what, I don't know about anybody else. I am horrible about how I just get going on stuff. And it's supposed to be like this, and I'm just going. I weld it on like that. I do. I don't know if everybody does that. I do it all the time. Drives me bonkers. If you don't have one of these in your somewhat metal shop or even borderline hobby shop like mine, you need one. Um, obviously, I don't know where it is. Oh, it's right behind you guys. Uh, you know, I got several whole drawer full of big big grinders. Um, I love the the slimline Bosch grinders. Anyway, uh, I got lots of those. I got a battery Milwaukee big grinder. It's great and all, but little stuff like this, these are where it's at. You guys are probably thinking, holy crap, I could have done that a lot faster with the grinder. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. That was a pretty little, good little hump there, right where the two welds met. Probably went a little quicker with a normal grinder, but also this pad is like shot. So, but I'm here now, so. Oh yeah. Thought we like it right there. See, I got it backwards. Tell me, I would have done that. Here we go. 
go. And now what I'm gonna do is, I know I sink my bracket in a half inch to uh, my rod, but I also want this to lap on here. I've designed it basically to lap on here a half inch. So I'm just gonna get a measurement from uh, the bolt hole down to here, which I'm actually gonna go this direction, down to the face of this, and I'll be just right. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm just gonna butt up to that. Right like that. And I am exactly 47 inches, which is exactly what I was on the other door. So I've done something right. All right, so we've got our handle set up. We've got our long bar and short bar. Um, we've got this tacked on and we've got the bottom one tacked on. We've got our measurement for our bar. So I'm gonna go over and cut those two pieces. All right, so there we go. We got that rod there cut and the little pieces welded on the end. I didn't show you guys cause it's exactly like welding those little tabs on the, on the gate latch. I just cut a little slit, slit them in there, tacked around them. Everything looked good. That one's sitting in there. So yeah, she's ready to go. Rounded those edges really nice cause they're gonna be right there near that handle. I've got them sitting there, all sitting at the right angles. Uh, this is perfectly, well, I mean, within a 16th perpendicular of this tube. And these are cocked at just a little bit of an angle to match going up to those. So we'll get those welded on those tabs. All right, we got our first one tacked on there. Well, more than tacked on, it's welded on. About to do our second one. Just wanna make a real quick point. This is one of those times I'm gonna be very mindful of my ground. Um, I do not want, especially on this where it's not precision, like machine shop precision, but it's somewhat precision. If you put it somewhere else on this part, it's gotta go through that bolt, through that bolt, and up into there, or worse yet, through this, through that slip joint, through that bolt, and into there. So, as I assume most people know, it makes that little arc, and it can leave you a burr or whatever can lightly fuse them together. Is it gonna be a huge thing? Probably not. Um, but I can pretty easily just put this up here right directly on the piece I'm working on and I eliminate those issues altogether. Sorry guys, I got ahead of myself when I got that done and got it off the table. As you can see that uh, that latch down there is pushed against the ground so it's got this all pivoted up. Everything works flawlessly. Uh, getting the last door set up. Um, I have to, everything I have to weld on the front face which is the face facing down right now when I put them together. Um, so I'm going to lay the big frames back on the table and I've got some of these new Vivor pipe stand type deals that I'm going to put out on the ends and then I'm going to weld the faces on each corner um, and get that all cleaned up and nice because that's got to be clean even though just a few minutes ago I said I don't like to clean things up. Those have to be because there's going to be a door face riding on it. So. I'll clean those up and um, and then I will lay each door one in there, get them all nice and set, and then I will weld these big old hinges on. So I'm just gonna do one top and bottom on each door. Um, and then I need to do some little stuff. I need to put on, let's see, it'd be this side of this one, there's gonna be this tube that runs up. Um, I'm gonna put a piece of angle, actually it'd be more like that and that and there as like a positive stop so the two doors meet and stay together or stay at the same on the same plane um and that'll keep rain and snow and wind and everything coming from coming through that gap so i need to put that on but i wanted to do it when the two doors were met with each other um, and i also need to drill the big hole in this tube on each one that will accept the spring latch um, from its brother door, sister door. Um, and I wanted to do that once they're actually sitting there together so I get it in the exact right spot. So I don't know if I'll be able to video actually putting it in, but I will make sure and do a quick video showing you guys once they're in. Um, and yeah.
I'll show you guys this real quick. Um, when you're kind of dumb and self-taught like me, um, and you don't necessarily have the right tools, so if you can see, don't mind that little piece there, but this is going to be our cross brace that goes from this corner down to that corner that we probably talked about earlier. Um, I believe earlier in the video, I was working it out where I could set it up in the bandsaw, and it just was getting clunky and stupid. It was, I had to have a piece set up here, and then this one I probably could do in there again, but when I had the, the other two, the opposing doors, or went the other way, I had to have something over on that end of the table, and it just, it didn't work very well. So, I don't appear to have the correct tool to get these angles from the center like that. Obviously, these speed squares work great. You know, you can get whatever angle you want and then mark it, but... When your pivot point is the center, it doesn't really work. So what I came up with is this is my, um, I don't even remember what you call these, <laughs> um, speed gauge, I, I don't know what you call it, for the bandsaw gauge on it. Different degrees that you can lock it into. Oops, sorry for the clunkiness here. Um, that you can lock it into. And I just flipped it over and did that with it and put it right on my center mark there and then uh, um, use my scribe and put my mark and it worked really well. So yeah, um, like I said, sometimes you don't have the right tools and you just gotta innovate. You just gotta, you gotta come up with ways to do things for either the <laughs> not as highly trained like myself or if you just don't have the money to have those fancy tools all right i realized i hadn't really showed this process um yet even though this is the very last door um but i figured i'd show that real quick what i want to do what i did with the other one um for a nice clean look is i want it inset in this tube so like so but down inside of it so there like that <laughs> So we've got ourselves marked out, as you can see right there, middle of the tube, 48 inches up. Um, I don't have an annular cutter or anything. That's This is roughly inch and an eighth. Um, but I do have a regular old style hole saw. But what I tried on the first door, and I kind of knew it probably wouldn't work, but I thought I'd try it anyway, is I tried my mag drill. I've got that Milwaukee M18 mag drill. This stuff just isn't thick enough. Um, that is one downfall. <laughs> to the mag drills. I could take this door off and stand it up, um, but then it's five feet up, actually five foot eight. So it's almost at the top of my head standing up. So that wasn't going to work that well. So I figured to heck with it. These hole saws are not super accurate. So the hole is going to be a little bit big anyway. So I just decided to just drill it as straight as I possibly could with a drill. And it actually, it turned out just fine on the other side. So um, also what I've done with this, is we need a way to also open this latch from the outside. Because remember, there's going to be uh, barn metal on this, what's the bottom right now, it's gonna be the top or the front. Um, and so I didn't really want, I was going to um, envision that tube is right here. I was going to just cut a cutout and then you can just reach in and pull this, but that felt kind of hokey. It was gonna have this big gaping hole in the so that didn't feel right. So what I went ahead and did is I had some extra half inch bar um, from making the, uh, the cam system. So I just took this, um, I decided I wanted it to come out four inches and then this is roughly a four inch long handle. So I thought I would mimic that. So I cut an eight and a half inch piece cause you gotta made this radius as tight as I could with heat. And it comes out to roughly a half inch radius. I, I didn't really get that technical, but Anyway, um, and so I put it in the vise and just put it right where I wanted it, like so. And then I have I got my torch out, my big acetylene torch, heated it up just below the bend, made a nice tight bend, easy peasy, no problem. I'm just going to weld this to the back side. I was going to do like that, kind of like what they did, even though theirs is actually goes into this piece. I was going to put it on top like that. But there's going to be quite a bit of leverage pulling on this. So I went ahead and I'm going to put it on the back side. It does not affect you using this handle from the inside. And then this is what it will end up looking like. Um, so 
Envision there will be bar metal here. We will cut a slot, just a small, little bit more than half inch wide uh, slot. We'll figure out how far this wants to travel and we'll just cut a slot. And then it will be a nice, nice, nice fit. Um, and everything should look really good. So then from the outside, like I said, you can envision there's bar metal here. This sticks out roughly two inches from the even the ridges of the bar metal. I think this will work good. So you can do it with that handle or this handle, and it honestly works just as easy with either one. It's a pretty pretty slick deal, I think. So. All right, got that welded on. Um, as you can see, it's gonna work beautifully. I have to say, I know I just sound like a complete you know what swinger in Milwaukee, but this is just a little M12 drill, which I've, you know, probably if you've ever gathered, I like everything over engineered. So I always want to use like the biggest possible tool and thing I can. So I've always used all my M18 stuff, but recently I've been enjoying having these smaller tools around. And I mean, this is only an inch and an eighth, but it's still a hole saw. And I tell you what, this thing just eats through it. It's uh pretty amazing it's only got two bars of one of these new high output batteries and we'll see if it uh wants to drill all the way through but i am seriously impressed so one of those rather elementary but sometimes overlooked or maybe if you've just like me teaching myself you learn it the hard way so maybe i'll just maybe you'll learn it here um when using any hole saw especially a big like four inch or something um in metal uh, be really careful. So you've got your your pilot, you know, and you're drilling this hole, which I would I would advise you to <laughs> drill a smaller hole first. These bits are not the greatest. When you drill in, you start to hear that drill bog down, like it's really biting metal. Um, slow down and ease up on your pushing. I kind of like push in like like pulses, like in, you know, and then and I slow the drill down to where it's just barely crawling because if you plunge through that metal. And all them teeth, just like that, just bam, catch. It's going to take you for a ride. Um, especially if you're using like a big corded drill or something. These drills are just wimpy enough, which is kind of an understatement. They're really not. But they're just wimpy enough, and I'm just strong enough that they don't really take me for a ride. But if you're not hanging on just right, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a wrist. Um, and that's especially true the bigger the bit and the bigger the drill, especially corded drills. So, all right, there's our first hole cut. As you can see, they do not do the nicest, prettiest cuts. And, you know, an inch and an eighth hole saw ends up with about a, oh, inch and three sixteenths probably hole or maybe even a little more. Um, especially if you were to clean those like burrs up, which I usually don't if I don't have to. Because that's the only way they, like, fit pretty tight is if you leave the burrs in there. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, if you need a precise hole, go with an annular cutter, not a hole saw. All right. Holes are drilled. Trued through like I want. Got my little square there holding it. And as you can see, it's all the way to this side. Looks pretty straight up and down. Yeah, not really. <laughs> That's just the nature. It's okay, because we're going to weld all that in, so it's not a big deal. But all that matters is the latch is square. So um, it's in there good. You can get to the grease fitting. Um, that's protruding out the bottom. Well, it's really the face or the top. And everything is pretty flat and square with the world. So, yeah, we're going to get it welded in. Uh, next, we'll get the, the frames laid in here and the pieces laid it on. I'm not going to do a ton of the videos on that, because mainly because I bet this is getting pretty long. Um, but I'm also going to try and at least, at least get some pictures if I can't get video shot of actually putting it in and, or what it looks like once it's in. So, um, And then I want to get a few of putting the hinges on and stuff. So I don't want to go too long on you guys. So I'm going to cut it pretty short from here on, and um, I'll see where we end up. All right, there we go, guys. Um, we got the frame laid down here, one of them, and both door halves laying in it um got all of our gaps where we want them and everything lined up everything's pretty dang square i'm within a 16th maybe an eighth in a few spots um i gotta weld the tops of everything um all the way around and then i'm gonna start working on 
putting those big old massive barrel hinges on. So I'm gonna get working on that. I gotta do a few other things. I gotta put the brackets for those latches in. I gotta drill the hole for that to pin into that door. I gotta put the piece of angle on here that will make a positive stop where these two doors meet. Um, so yeah, gotta do a few things, do some welding and um, we'll be good to go guys. Probably also noticed the new pipe stands, probably didn't know they were new, but they are. Um, these are from Vivor, not sponsored or anything like that. Just I just saw them and they were a good price. My local welding supply wanted a hundred and I think it was like $110 or $115 a piece for these. And picked these up from Vivor for 75 bucks. And honestly, they seem to work pretty good. The uh, extension pipe works good. The handle works good. It's pretty solid once you tighten the little set bolts up. Um, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. All right, guys, there it is. I know it's probably a bit of a jump for you in the video, but there's been a little time elapsed since I was last with you, but uh, there it is installed in the barn. Obviously that door swung open. Um, everything's squared up, leveled up. Um, everything fit fantastic. We did struggle a little bit. There was some concrete right down here that kind of fought us a little bit, but the door fit perfectly. Um, everything works as it should. Um, only thing I have not done yet is I made, because this is pretty thin tubing, as you can see. It's just uh, 16 gauge. So I made a striker plate to go on here that is the exact, like, very nice tight fit, exact fit of this. Um, so yeah, I made that striker plate. I'm actually going to, I brought the little flux core welder. I'm actually going to weld that on in place here just to make sure it is, because it's a nice snug fit. Sorry, the wind's blowing. Um, make sure it is a really, really nice fit on there. So they are going to tin it, so you guys are not gonna get a view of that but it's just gonna be regular barn metal tin, which is also what's gonna go here, up there, and then over there. And then uh, next week, we'll get the one on the other end put on. And, uh, but I think I will, the video is probably plenty long enough. I think I will leave you guys there. And um, yeah, um, maybe I'll show you this here real quick. Just live in action. Um, this all works beautifully. Um, and I've actually, what I did was, now that I'm here talking to you, I went ahead and put a nylon washer back here. And then I'm gonna actually tighten this up a little bit more. And then I don't even need a catch. As you can see, it almost holds itself as it is. So I'm gonna tighten it up just a little bit and then it will be, it will be golden. So there you go, that's everything. Um, thanks for watching guys. And uh, if you would, uh, like the video, all that good stuff. All right, thanks a lot.